Good afternoon, everybody. So we have uh, this afternoon the last talk of Maria Frappoli, and it she will be. It's not that. <laughs> okay. So she will be closing her comments and her presentation of her book, The Nature of Truth. And we can, after her presentation, we can have the last discussion. And I. I wanted, because of uh, some people asked about uh, who we are in this workshop, so I want to clarify that um, we uh, this workshop is organized by a group, Social Brains Group, a group of researchers at Nisinos of the program graduation program in philosophy, and. Uh, who is participating? Participating are professors of and um, postdocs of the program, uh, the graduate program in philosophy of Unicinos. So we have here, for example, uh, Vasilis Tompandis, that is a postdoc at our uh, program, and John Bolander, who is a professor, and Tudor Baitut, who is a professor at our program. Adriano Brito and myself, Sofia Stein. So, because uh, and I, so I want to thank you for the participation, and I hope we have a very uh, nice and uh, active last discussion. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> well. Uh, in my last talk, uh, in my latest talk, uh, I want to uh, to uh, speak about what is called uh, as the Frege Gitch argument against expressivism, and this is uh, because Adriano wanted me to do that. So if you don't enjoy the talk, he is the one to be blamed. It's not my fault. I know I I can't see that uh, the topic is quite technical in some sense. So, but in order uh, for the topic to be understandable, I have to to go back uh, to my to my talk of to one of my talks of um, to one of the talk I, I presented yesterday, and uh, I will insist in with uh, in what uh, I have called an expressive approach or expressivism in general, because the Frege Gitch argument is the classical, the standard criticism against expressivist views of meaning. And most people think that it is con conclusive, that uh, because of the frege Gitch argument, we are not allowed anymore to speak of expressive meaning. And I think that this is just wrong. So I'm going to explain the argument and my position. Here, I just repeat. If you uh, remember yesterday, I said some facts of the matter. The facts of the matter were that, uh, well, I will repeat the, the, the three uh, theses. What is expressive meaning? And then I said, okay, this is the second part, and I didn't say anything about it. And it is what I'm going to do today, which is the scope of the Frege Gitch argument. And uh, it is divided into two parts, the force effects and toxicity, and then my conclusion. So. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Let's go to the. Okay, yeah. The first one, the first thesis that I uh, I uh, defended yesterday, the one to which I I call semantic hierarchism, is uh, this one: some predicative expressions require predicative or sentential argument. Alternatively, some concepts express properties, modifications, or operation on other concepts or conceptual contents. One of my my thesis. And uh, as to remind you, the second one is semantic pluralism, which is just that not every term and not every concept signifies in the same way. That's that uh, all. And the third, which is the expressive. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, here we the third thesis is semantic expressivism, which is functions of propositions, I mean higher order concepts, concepts like, like truth and good and knowledge, 
Council of Propositions intervened in the uh, in the Austinian proposition, indicating indicating part of the circumstances in which the lecture has to be evaluated. Indicating is not describing, is not contributing a concept, a new concept. So nevertheless, they don't affect the lecture, which is the argument. So this is semantic expressivism. And my kind of expressivism is minimal expressivism, which is the combination of these uh, three theses. So now. The Frege Gitch argument. Uh, it, uh, the, the, the argument is called uh, Frege Gitch because uh, Frege, uh, sorry, Gitch presented it and attributed some of the notions he was um, using to Frege. I don't think that Frege would uh, agree with this argument. So I think that this, is, this, this, uh, this label is unfair to Frege. Okay, so uh, Gitch uh, presents his argument, which is something very short, in a paper which is called Ascriptivism, which is, uh, the same paper is also the chapter, chapter eight of his collection, Logic Matters. So Gitch idea, so Gitch, uh, Gitch's thesis is Ascriptivism is untenable. A semantic position is ascriptivist in Gitch's sense it, uh, if and only if it supports the following inference. The inference is this one. The characterization of an act as voluntary or intentional implies that the speaker is not describing the agent's mental state, but ascribing it to him. So we are not by means of an of a uh, by means of voluntary or intentional acts. We don't describe. We don't describe. Let's say. I, I mean, I, you, you already know that I don't. I don't believe in what I'm going to say now. But let me put it just uh, for, for the sake of argument. The point is, if you use a voluntary or intentional uh, kind of discourse, you are not trying to describe in how things are, but, but to attributing to your interlocutor some kind of mental state. And so this uh, inference, it follows. It seems to follow. They think uh, it follows the more debatable claim that by removing description from the analysis of intentional acts, truth goes to. So the idea is that if you think that some operators, some concepts, or some speech acts don't describe or don't have as their aims describing reality, then truth cannot be applied to them. This is the point. It's quite, uh, I mean, it's quite generalized, uh, this uh, kind of uh, connection. So, together with, with the other three theses that I presented yesterday and I have repeated today, I, uh, we might add the following one, T4. If the pragmatic force of a speech act is not descriptive, its semantic content cannot be assessed for truth or falsehood. Only if we are in the presence of a speech act which is descriptive are we allowed to use the notion of truth and falsehood. Again, this is quite common. Everybody thinks it, this is right. So, I have called T4 truth in aptness. 
So, one of Gitch's targets is precisely non-descriptivism about truth. What he says is the following. There is a theory that to say what the policeman said is true is not to describe or characterize what the policeman said, but to corroborate it. So Gitch says. And from T4, everybody thinks that it follows that if true ascriptions do not describe, they are neither true, true nor false. 